I used to be a faculty developer around issues of diversity. And one of the best ways to get curriculum and pedagogy to change is to give people room to think about what that means to them. So one of the ways that we pursued changing the curriculum and changing teaching is to fund really the educators in and out of the classroom. What would you do if you had to pursue this objective to increase mentored reflection? How would you do it given your disciplinary background, given your particular skill set? And then once they've test driven a way to improve their curriculum, yes, focused on their particular discipline or area of expertise, how do they translate that to their peers in other disciplines and other areas? So one of the best ways to change curriculum teaching is to give good teachers room to explore and innovate, and then ask them to tell other good teachers what they've learned. So my idea was let's get two people or two different groups together that have uh, something that the other one needs. Nonprofits need help with social media. We, myself and Carrie Stockwell, felt like there was a, a sincere need um, to really focus uh, an entire J-term class on leadership. Um, and I just think it would be a, a good experience for the, for the students, biology students, to get them out of the country and in a new, envir new environment and, and to explore a different, a different area of the world than Minnesota. To develop a class that would allow chemistry majors to look at art and study the chemical changes in art, but then also the impact that has on how people interpret art and view art down the, uh, in the future. It was very hands-on. Um, everybody was able to bring their unique interests and skills to the table, um, not only for creating work that was you know, unique to them, but also they could share ideas. So the overall structure was the, um, the performance. We, we culminated in the, the performance at the very end of the class. Um, and we included a trip to the opera elixir at the very end of the class and also the trip to the um, behind the scenes uh, opera. And so on a daily basis the students were sometimes singing as a member of a chorus, sometimes they were rehearsing a solo, sometimes they were practicing independently. They'll get, they'll get experience with collecting data and doing original research, presenting their findings, and then I think they'll get a lot out of the exposure to a different culture as well. I think just the, the experiences that students will have I think will be, should be life-changing, I sure hope. One of the things I think that was really interesting is we introduced kind of a, a daily idea of hot topics. So, I mean it was a very interesting part of the conversation. Uh, I think that we, that we learned a lot from each other to know what's on students' minds, quite frankly. Another project was, a, a, was an audiovisual um, application that used sound as input and then generated abstract geometric forms based on the music inputs. And the uniqueness also um, is apparent in the variety of music that we did. Um, not just one show, but 17 different scenes from totally different. Uh, types of music. We had tours of uh, the Minneapolis Institute of Art every week and they also got to tour the Midwest Art Conservation Center um, which was uh, unique compared to most science classes that usually doesn't happen. <laughs> the students learned, uh, the students taught me, and the students went out to work with the nonprofit organizations. The nonprofits taught the students and the students taught the nonprofits. So it was a learning opportunity all the way around. Um, and I probably took the most away of, of anybody. It's improved my leadership skills. It's improved our um, department's uh, ability to lead. And because you know we have um, s interaction with so many students, um, this just gives us an opportunity to interact with you know even more. And so we're really, really grateful for that. Um. My biggest takeaway was how hungry the students were for this kind of experience. And the more we asked of them, the more they gave us. 
for both of us, you know, there are certain students you see in different aspects. And so to have 13 people that you might, you didn't know, and now you do know in a different way and interact with them throughout the semester as you see them on campus involved in, whether it's softball or whether it's in orientation or whatever, it is, it just makes your uh, experience, your job richer because you just know people better, students. I think the biggest takeaway was uh, a moment that I had in the museum after our third tour. There was a student who uh, said that had she not gone through the museum three times and worked with three different tour guides and um, been, been forced to stand in front of a painting for 10 minutes and really break it down and try to understand what was in that, she, she wouldn't have realized uh, uh, how much is being said through art. Well, I would just say, you know, the Provost Initiative and it has been fantastic because it, it has given us an opportunity to um, collaborate not only internally in the athletic department, but outside of the athletic department. So the Provost, just pro, Provost Initiative provided the, the, the catalyst that we needed to take this from thinking and talking about it to making it happen. I think one thing to say that I appreciate the opportunity to be part of this experiment with the Provost support and the fact that we were selected to be one of these experimental classes I'm very appreciative of. If we think about experiential learning, if we think about interdisciplinarity, if we think about mentor reflection, over the long haul, continuing to invest in this sort of initiative funding, in these sort of faculty and staff development work, Will, will be invaluable at changing, uh, at foregrounding what's most distinctive about Hamlin in the next few years. <laughs>